We've brought cards on the table here to Dooley's restaurant at Sheffield Wednesday to talk to one of the club's most famous and fervent fans, former Home Secretary and Sheffield MP, David Blunkett. David, I've got to ask you the obvious question to start with. Is, is there not a similarity between politicians and football referees? I'm afraid there is, mainly in the way the public actually see us. Um, I've, I've sat at football matches and heard the expletives about <laughs> referees all my life and I've heard similar ones about politicians regrettably as well and what, what we have in common is that we can't win because one side or the other is going to actually be aggrieved with us. Um, we, we, the expectations of referees and it's true of politicians is way beyond the ability of any individual um, to deliver and if you get it wrong, you've got a very, very unforgiving audience. <laughs> so it is the impossible job, isn't it? Well, it, both it of them is. are. It mm. is. Let, let's exempt amateur referees giving their time on a Saturday and Sunday because we are talking about the professionals here because all we can say is thank you to the volunteers. But the professional referees, again, they're committed. I mean, who would, who would be other than really committed to the sport uh, to turn out on a Saturday or Sunday or a, a dark cold winter's evening and be abused for 90 minutes. I mean yeah. you have to be almost as insane as being in <laughs> politics. Well you have to ask that question, not only why would you want to be a referee, why would you want to be a politician? Well to make a difference and I suspect that referees feel that they've got a contribution to make either because they were involved in football in their very early days and really just love it and because they know I, I, I'd hate to use the word a kind of duty and commitment but they know that the, the sport's not going to continue unless they do and you can see the difference in Premier League referees can't you and with the championship compared with League One I mean my wonderful club Sheffield Wednesday was in League One is in the championship the referees are marginally better, it has to be said, in the championship. Of course, David, your story is very well chronicled, blind since birth, sadly, but you've, you've had such a remarkable life and career. How, though, do you follow football matches? Well, I follow them on the hospital radio commentary. It varies across clubs. Some have dedicated commentators who are just there for the match. Some use the uh, online uh, communication these days, most most of the big clubs, don't they, have uh, the ability for you to be able to pick it up on your computer across the world. There are different titles in different places. Wednesday night is the one here. But it's much better to have uh, the earphones on anywhere in the ground now. It used to be you had to sit in a particular spot to get it. Now, anywhere in the ground. Uh, hospital radio obviously putting it out for the regional hospitals which are based in the city and I'm very grateful to those who do it because it's a, a dedicated piece of volunteering it brings it alive for me I also have either my one of my four sons or my wife with me I very rarely here on my own and they chip in as well so I get a second opinion if you like <laughs> and if somebody's wandered off telling me the scores of Accrington Stanley mm. then I, I tune in to my sons or my wife to see just what's happening on the pitch. Do those opinions usually coincide or not because I know Leon Rothman who heads up the hospital radio team uh, although he's a Sheffield Wednesday supporter uh, he is I would say a fairly impartial watcher of a game of football. I would say that the commentaries I get here, and it's been true in most, not all, but in most of the places, even with the biased, i.e. They're, they're talking more about our players than they are quite obviously about our opponents, are pretty clear. You know, when the crowd think it's a penalty and in Leon and Terry's case at Hillsborough, they don't, they say so. If they can't see clearly enough and I'm afraid sometimes they indicate that the refs not seen clearly enough <laughs> I don't just mean they think the refs awful but that the ref didn't really have a clear view and, and by the way and this is like politics as well uh, it's sometimes the uh, the story that's going on somewhere else that's the problem in this case linesmen because quite a lot is reliant on linesmen these days 
and I get the impression from the commentary and from everything I pick up that quite often refs are talking to, relying on the linesmen, and the linesmen aren't always up to it, is the honest truth. Mm. I think that that view would be reflected by some of the professionals on our side as well. Uh, Keith Hackett, Mark Halsey, uh, people of this calibre who, uh, in fact, have made exactly the point that you, you just made. Yeah, and I think a lot more attention to the linesman wouldn't come amiss in terms of training, in terms of reinforcement, because some of them will want to be refs and actually demonstrating you're really on the ball uh, and you're concentrating. I mean, the, the one thing I'm clear about, and having been in cabinet for eight years is lose your concentration at any one moment and it can be catastrophic yes. and for a, for a ref or for a linesman just your mind wanders your eyes wander presumably yeah. and you've missed it and of course you know unless you've got the um, the, the uh, electronic uh, uh, backup to rely on which of course they haven't here uh, then you're, you're really down to your own judgment and you have to have the confidence to carry it through and I think the crowd sometimes forget that. I mean I, I have on occasions, it has to be said, as an owner of a guide dog, offered the referee my guide dog because, <laughs> you know, the crowd have been shouting, you know, can he see, can, can, give him yeah. a dog, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I've got some sympathy with them, well I've got a lot of sympathy with them um, but I do think that actually the, the quality of refereeing is, ver is very variable. Mm -hmm. And I think if we could iron out a bit of that variability, it would be quite a, quite a useful thing in terms of restoring more, com I mean, we're back to politics, aren't we? More confidence mm -hmm. and trust in uh, what's being done and how it's being done. And a bit more knowledge, which is why your website's important, a bit more knowledge about the techniques, the challenges, the difficulties of a referee. I think that's quite useful and I think there ought to be more uh, in the programmes uh, matches and a bit more out to the to the supporters about the challenges of refs. In other words, we, we know about the ones you've mentioned, the Keith Hackett's, we, we know about the Howard Webbs, who incidentally has been doing a phenomenal job um, in my own constituency working with young people from the most diverse and difficult backgrounds uh, if we knew a bit more about the refs and we understood what they're doing and how they're doing it, including in their own time, I think they get a, a, a much better press. Well, uh, you are the ref is trying to educate and entertain and inform <laughs> and humanise the whole subject of refereeing. I think humanising uh, is important, although in actual fact there's a code of silence, almost some people have described suppression uh, within uh, professional game match officials and Premier League about the subject of refereeing. Referees don't speak. Uh, nobody speaks on their behalf, not very often. I understand why refs themselves wouldn't want to comment on the commentary so they wouldn't want to respond if they did they'd be at it all the time in terms of what's written about them in the press or the commentaries on television and radio but I do think that having a separate program of the if you like information education about refereeing not least because it would encourage youngsters to want to think about refereeing and that would help the amateur game and it would also help an understanding, including for people like me, who honestly, I've been this season aggravated on more than one occasion <laughs> with the, the uh, apparent uh, uh, indifference to the reality on the pitch of, of the referee. But I am biased, aren't I? Of course you are. <laughs> and you've been biased all of your life. I have. Since I, was, I came to Hillsborough when I was four with my dad, I sat on the wall behind the goal. You could do that in those days. Um, I had a half-brother, very uh, much older than me, who was uh, an assistant groundsman here at Hillsborough. Uh, I've followed the club. When I was in government, I still came, but not as frequently as I wished. And now I'm able to come most of the time, certainly when I'm in the country. Yeah. And I still enjoy the game even though I don't always enjoy the outcome. Mm. Just to draw another parallel with politicians and between politicians and referees, uh, you both uh, operate to a similar soundtrack, don't you? Soundtrack of... Uh, you mean a sound off where yeah, people yeah. are sounding off whether it's formally in the media 
or whether it's on the terraces and, and the car. Or Prime Minister's questions. Or, or yeah, and the, the, actually the raucous nature of uh, the, out, the, the outcry at some of the ref's decisions remind me of Prime Minister's questions, although uh, stepping down 2015 from uh, Parliament, it is certainly something I won't miss. OK, well, we wish you luck in your retirement, although I'm sure you're not completely retired. I'm not going to completely retire. Yeah. It will give me more time to my beloved football. And pray God that uh, now that Sheffield Wednesday have learned how to make chances, somebody will learn how to take them. David, thank you ever so thank much. You. Thank you.